Hello everybody, welcome to Handstands with Natalie. I'm Natalie and this is the Couch to Handstand 30 day challenge, day number three. And today we are going to work a little bit more on our core stability. So let's get started with a warm up. So as we did in the last two sessions as well, start with feet parallel, hip width apart, pull the navel in towards the spine, roll your shoulders backwards, big circles, keep the navel pulled in towards your spine. Pulling the navel in towards the spine is your key to core stability. That's what you always have to do when we practice any of these exercises, any handstand exercises, you always want to stabilize your core by pulling the navel in towards the spine. Let's roll the shoulders to the front. Big circles, pull the shoulders up to the ears and feel your shoulder blades moving up and down on your back. Yeah, the roll of the shoulder, here that movement in the shoulder is initiated by your shoulder blades moving up and down on your spine. Maybe a bit of a strange thing to imagine in the beginning, but it can feel very exciting once you start to get a sense of how movement is interconnected in the body. Okay, lift the arms above the head as we did in the first session. Pull the shoulders up to the ears together with me for 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, excellent. Shake your arms, push the wardrobe out to the side for 10 and one. And pull your shoulders up and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10. One more time above the head for 10. One, two, Three, pull the navel in towards the spine. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push the wardrobe out for ten. One, two, three, four, five. Pull your shoulders up to your ears. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, shoulders pulled away from the ears. Now, really, one more time. Engage that belly button, pull the navel in towards the spine. Uh, let's stay here with the arms. And now see if you can push your arms back, hands behind you on a plane without pulling the shoulders up. So you're probably already starting to feel the shoulders burn. And let's do this for 10 to the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and release. Very good. One more time, really. Ground your feet into the floor, navel in towards the spine, arms out to the side. Shoulders pushed away from the ears and back for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, great. So this really gets the muscles going that we need in our back and in the shoulders in order to really hold our weight in the handstand. Okay, step the feet slightly apart into a straddle position and now stretch up with one arm and just gently lean towards the side, diagonally to the side, really pull the stomach in, ground your feet into the floor. You can put the hand here on the hip and stretch up towards the ceiling. Very good. Release, come back, other side. First, stretch up. Really allow the shoulder to be pulled out here, out of the socket and to the side. So stretch up and diagonally to the side. And let's hold it here. Really push your shoulder up towards the ear. Stretch yourself as long, make yourself as long as possible and release. Okay, excellent. Hands to the front. Open and close as fast as you can. Open and close. Open and close faster, 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 a little bit faster. And shake the hands. One more time to the side. Open and close 
as fast as you can. Open and close. And faster, a bit faster. And release. Okay, excellent. Very good. Now roll to the floor, starting with the head first. The head gets heavier. Slightly bend the knees. And either you put the hands on the floor or you put the hands on your thighs here. Or you take a chair and rest part of your upper body weight on a chair. And together with me, let's just bend the knees, allow the tailbone to pull you to the ground. And you can have the hands here on the floor or use a chair for support. And straighten the legs. Allow that stretch to slightly deepen. Head is long and relaxed. One more time, bend and straighten. So it really doesn't have to look the, that way. It really doesn't have to look the same as, as when I do it here. It's really enough. You can have the, the hands, rest the hands here on the shins and you can just bend the legs. And as soon as you can touch the floor, you, you place the hands on the ground and come to a squat position. Excellent, very good. Tabletop position, rock back and forth back and forth here. Try to really dig the fingers into the ground and create a slight stretch for your wrists here. A gentle stretch for the wrists. Still dig the fingers into the ground. Really press the fingers into the ground and press the floor away. So try this once with me. Just put your arms out to the front and then push the shoulders Push your arms to the front so you can so you can see your shoulders slightly moving towards the front. That's what I mean when I say push the floor away. Push your shoulders front, push the floor away. So in a tabletop position, push the floor away, rock back and forth. And now um, turn your fingers to face the side and rock here from side to side. Don't forget to push into the floor and try to create a gentle stretch for your wrists. And it's really up to you to decide how far you want to take this. It really shouldn't be painful. It should just start to test the limits of the flexibility of your wrist to get your wrists used to this type of activity. And let's go in a circle, gentle circle. So I'm circling my body here above the wrist. And you don't have to stay in a tabletop position. You can also just rest here. Um, but you do have to come a little bit with your shoulders above the wrists in order to do this. And let's circle the other way. Circle the other way. And circle. And circle. And circle. Okay. Excellent. Very good. So now let's try and hold our tabletop position with the knees off the floor 15 seconds this time and we repeat it three times let's see how that goes so flip the toes under and together push into the ground with me and peel the knees off the floor let's hold it here for one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and release. Very good. Flip the knees to the, the legs to the front. Place the hands behind you. You can bend your knees slightly here. Place the hands diagonally here behind you. Open your chest towards the ceiling and hold it here and breathe. And release. One more time. 15 second tabletop hold. Really pull the navel in towards the spine. Push your hands into the ground. Let's hold it here together for 15 seconds. Remember, you're not the only one who's sweating in front of this video. There are other people as well. You're not alone in this challenge. So together with me, let's hold it for 15 seconds. Peel the knees off, push into the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and release. One more time, swing the legs to the front, bend the knees, hands diagonally here behind you. Open up the chest, so you press the chest up towards the ceiling. This really doesn't have to be a big movement, it can be very small. It's really just about feeling a, a slight stretch here across the front of your shoulder. And breathe. So that your muscles get enough oxygen to recover for the next round release. Swing the knees to the back. Tabletop position, peel the knees off the floor, push into the ground for 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, great, and release. Let's come to the back on the floor with a towel or with a yoga mat as you like. Let us take our sit-up exercises for core stability a tiny bit further. So this time you are going to interlace the fingers, put them behind your head, and very simple, yeah, just a tiny little sit-up, a very small movement. You want to really press, press in, press your, your head into your hands so that you don't really pull on your neck or anything. This is nice and cushioned and really just pull your nose up towards the ceiling. Just that, a tiny little movement. Pull the navel in towards the spine. Let's try and do that for 10 together. Interlace the fingers behind your head. Pull the navel in towards the spine. And let's pull the nose up towards the ceiling for 10. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Excellent, very good. We just did our first sit-up exercise roll towards the front, hands beside you and just lift the nose off the floor while still pulling the navel in towards the spine for a gentle stretch. It really doesn't have to be more than this. A gentle stretch, really make sure you're not pinching anything in your lower back. It's just really to stretch your front out a tiny bit. And come back. We're not going to do that sit-up exercise again. We're going to do another exciting exercise. And all we're going to do here is just touch the ankle. Touch the ankle, touch the ankle, touch the ankle, right? Let's try and do that for 20 times. So you're going to have the head lifted off the floor and touch the ankle left and right together with me 20 times. Let's go. Head is lifted off and right, left. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Excellent and release. One more time, a roll around to the front. Navel pulled in towards the spine, press your feet into the floor and gentle stretch for the front of your body really support yourself with the arms it's just a gentle stretch here and breathe and release okay push yourself back up onto the knees and now again rock back here onto the feet Lift your hips and drop the neck. Just stay in this position and just watch once. So what I mean when I say drop the neck is that basically while pushing into the floor, as I said, we want to keep our spine round. So let's just do this once together. Lift your arms up and imagine you are making, you're creating a cat back, a round back, round. That's what I mean by round. 
and then push up into the floor or push to the front into the floor. But that's what I mean by round back. I keep repeating some things I keep repeating over and over again because the more you hear it, the more it's going to get into your body and then you hear my voice while you practice. So lift the hips, round the back and also drop the head slightly so that your neck can be in line with the curve of your spine. Push the weight onto the hands here. Really try and take as much weight as you can onto the hands. Let's stay here for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and bring the hips down. Okay, so there's different ways of doing this. Um, find your own way, it really doesn't have to look the same as when I do it. So maybe you have to be a little bit further front with the arms because of because your flexibility is different from mine so that's totally okay if you want to be here you can still try and take as much weight as possible here onto the hands okay one more time together with me lift the hips up round your back navel pulls in towards the spine let's stay here for 10 seconds one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Bring the hips down. Okay. So what we're going to do next now is we will keep that push in the floor. But we're going to continuously lift the hips up and down. Right? So from here, you're going to lift the hips up and push into the floor. Bring them back down. Bring the hips up, bring them back down. Just that for 10. With me, place the hands on the floor, dig the fingers into the ground and let's lift the hips for 10. Round your back and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten excellent and come back down very good so now you're probably already feeling a little bit of what that's like to take weight onto the arms let's do a nice supported sideways plank exercise to finish off and then we do a little stretch so we, this was our weight-bearing training of this class. Now bring the knees towards the side, one foot straight, one knee on the floor. Push yourself up. Now you really should try to take that second hand away from the floor here and bring it up to the hips. Let's stay here for 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Bring the hips down, swing the legs around, knees bend, that knee stays bent, this leg straightens, push the hips up, try and peel that hand here off the floor, bring it up to the hips, let's stay here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Excellent, bring it down. Come back onto the knees. Here, stretch towards the front. So again, you'd wanna try and keep, um, stay seated here on, on your heels. If you're not used to this, then just put a towel or something soft underneath the parts where it feels uncomfortable. You are going to get used to having the weight on the knees. It's, it's a very useful position for stretches. So now here, perch the fingers up and stretch towards the front, stretch towards the front as far as you can. Keep the fingers here lifted, keep the hands lifted on your fingers, stretch towards the front as much as you can and really try, try and come into a compact position. So maybe this isn't very far, maybe you're going to have to stay here, but really try and increase that length and that stretch. Now let's put the hands flat on the floor and try and stretch a little bit further. Yeah, so maybe you have to be here. That's totally okay. Try and stretch further. And now 
stretch the, the arm left and right to the front a little bit further reach 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 and reach on the other hand reach and reach reach and reach and reach a bit further and a bit further one more time okay and slowly roll up push yourself back onto the feet try and straighten come to standing by slowly rolling through the spine very good palm pressed towards the floor neck pulls the other direction feel that stretch along the spine and release other side press the palm towards the floor neck is pulling so you, you the head is pulling the opposite direction feel the stretch across the neck and release interlace the fingers place the hands at the back of your neck now while keeping the navel pulled in keep your spine upright and just gently allow the weight of your hands to create a gentle stretch for the back of your neck and stay here and breathe. And breathe. And release the hands, bring the head back up. Come to a parallel position. Give a sigh of relief of how wonderfully easy it is to just stand on your feet. The simplest thing, yet at the same time a very complex thing, to hold our body upright while we're standing on the feet. If you like, close your eyes. Just check in with your body. What was new today? Try and visualize where you have had that new experience, that new feeling of awareness in which body part did it, did it occur? Where can you remember feeling it? What was challenging about the last half hour? Try and remember a physical, a physical sensation of that challenge. Try and locate it in the map of your body. Imagine your body is like a big a big map of unknown land and try and locate that feeling of challenge. Where have you encountered it? And now try and visualize what was too challenging and too hard. Where have you been struggling? Try and really locate the body part that was struggling. And now just feel your center line of balance, the gravity, the weight of your body falling through towards the floor quite naturally. It happens quite naturally. Weight falling to the floor while posture muscles keep us upright. Now open your eyes if you haven't already. This was your third day of handstand practice. I hope you come back for tomorrow's class. Rest, drink lots of water, and thank you very much for practicing with me. Have a great day.